Hello and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can create augmented reality applications using the ARKit framework. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and launch Xcode. Now for this particular episode or video or anything we do with the ARKit, you do need a physical iPhone for this to work. So anything iPhone 6X, 6X, S or higher is going to work just fine. I'm using iPhone 7 Plus, but you can use any iPhone 6S or higher. All right. The Xcode that I'm using is Xcode 10.1. So make sure that you do have the latest Xcode uh, for this to work. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And from the project templates, you can see there are different kinds of application. This time we're going to select the augmented reality project template because it will give us a good starting point of building augmented reality applications. I'm going to go ahead and say next and then name of your project. You can say anything you want. I'm just going to say hello AR kit. Make sure you select Swift over here because we will be using Swift. And for the content technology, you can actually create AR kit applications using many different technologies. So you can use the ThemeKit framework, SpriteKit framework, or Metal. I'm going to use ThemeKit framework because ThemeKit framework is much easier to use as compared to Metal. SpriteKit framework is used to create two-dimensional applications. So think about Mario or Pac-Man, those kind of games. And Metal is more of like a hardcore thing. So you can create some crazy 3D first-person shooter games using Metal also. But ThemeKit is like a middle ground. It's an easy framework to use, and it allows you to easily integrate ARKit into uh, the ThemeKit framework. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to select ThemeKit. On the desktop is fine. You can actually save it anywhere you like. That's completely up to you. And there we go. So this is all the code that is already added when I created a project, as you have actually seen. Let's go ahead and run this code. Now, one thing you will notice is that my phone is already connected. I'm plugged in because I cannot really run this code on a simulator because it does use the camera. So that's a prerequisite for this particular video and any ARKit enabled video or enabled uh, project that you must have a physical device for this to work. All right. So let me just go ahead and run this and I will showcase it to you over here so that you can see what you, what the default template looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and I'm going to unlock my phone also. Once it builds, you'll be able to see it on the, uh, on the screen. So on this screen, basically, hopefully it's going to load. All right. And by the way, we haven't really added anything, right? We haven't really uh, this is just the default template that we have just created with ARKit. And it's going to say, would you like to access the camera? And there you go. All right. Don't worry too much about the green screen. That's just a green screen for some other purpose. But now you can see that I can see the spaceship right in front of me. And I can actually move. And I'm actually wired, so I can't really move that much. But you can see that I can actually look underneath of it. I can look over it. I can even walk behind it if I want to. And how you can see the stationary it is, it's just fixed in that particular position. All right. Okay, so that's great. But how can we add our own stuff to ARKit? And that is what we're going to learn today. All right. Now, it does help if you have a little bit of knowledge of ScenePad, but if you don't, don't worry too much about it because we are uh, going to take small steps so that you can learn these things. The first thing I, I usually do is I remove all the access code. So all of this session interrupted, session was interrupted, did fail with error, just remove it. We don't really need it at this particular moment. Also this commented out code, let's remove it so that we are only dealing with the code that we actually need. Okay. Now for the theme kit, just understand a couple of things. For a scene kit, you need a SCN scene class. That's your scene. Uh, it's kind of like a movie scene. So it can be in some sort of a jungle. I mean, a scene basically reflects 
what things or what story you're trying to tell. In this particular instance, you're seeing that we are loading a ship scene kit uh, theme. All right, so the scene kit scene, which is ship.scn, is right over here inside the assets folder. And this particular scene only contains this particular space, spaceship, but it can contain anything you want, like mountains or rivers or tanks or whatever you want. And then finally, we set the scene to, well, basically the scene instance of the scene view. Now, if you go to the storyboard, this is just to give you a little bit of idea. If you go to the storyboard, and let me actually again load the storyboard, you can see that there's only one view on the storyboard, which is called the ARSCN view. This is the augmented reality scene kit view. And basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to add items, add nodes to this particular view so that you can see those things in real life. Anytime you want to display anything in a scene, in a scene kit scene, you have to add it as a node, all right? That's all you need to remember. So let's go ahead and create our own node. So I'm not gonna use this ship scene, which is a spaceship. I'm just gonna remove it and create an empty scene like this. All right, so now if I run this, you won't really see anything on, uh, on the augmented reality application because I completely removed that spaceship. So what do we want to display instead of the spaceship? Well, how about we start small and we just display a particular 3D or three-dimensional cube, okay? How do, we dis how do we create that cube? Well, in order to create that cube, you need to first create the geometry of the cube. Now, geometry, you can think of it as a skeleton or the wireframe of this particular cube. So I can say over here, SCN box, which is one of the geometries, and it will ask you for different things, like what will be the width of the cube, the height of the cube, the length of the cube, and so on. Now, one of the important things you need to remember when working with ARKit is that all the different heights and width, the, basically the unit of measurement, is in meters, all right? So if I put 0 0.3, that's 0 0.3 meters. 0 0.3 meters is actually pretty big, all right? 0 0.3 meters is not like 0 0.3 pixels. It's, it's pretty big. I mean, in real life, 0 0.3 meters can be pretty visible. So we are just gonna create a cube with 0 0.3 meters. The chamfer radius is set to zero. We don't really want our cube to be rounded corners. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so we have the cube. This is a geometry. And as I said earlier, the only way you can add something to the scene kit scene is by adding a node. Okay, so this means we need to create a node. So I'm gonna create a node called box node, which will be SCN node, scene kit node, and it's gonna take in a geometry. Guess what? We already have the geometry, which is box. So we're just gonna pass it and that's it. Now, the coordinates or the position, since we are working with three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, the three dimensions of that particular box node will be zero, zero, zero. Now the zero, 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 which is the origin, is where my camera is or where basically I'm standing. So I may not be able to see that because I'm standing at that position. I might, may have to move around. In order to just position your node in real world anywhere, we can actually say that we can actually position it uh, using these coordinate systems. So we need to provide the X, Y, and Z. In this case, X is fine. Y is also fine. Z will be a little bit different. Now Z is basically saying that the object that we're trying to add, the node that we're trying to add, how much away or further from us or towards us. So if I say minus 0 0.2, this will be away from us, all right? So 0 0.2 meters. So now we have created the box geometry, we created the box node and we set the position. And now we can go ahead and add it to the scene. So we can say scene, dot root node dot add child node and then we can add box node and that's pretty much it that's all you need to do 
to get started in adding a three-dimensional box to your scene. So let me go ahead and run this. And if everything is correct, you will see a box being added, which doesn't really have any color, so it will be defaulted to white color. But you hopefully will be able to see our box being added. And there we go. Now the box is way too big. I have to move a little bit, but you can see the box is definitely getting added, right? Now, if I want to adjust the size of this box, because this just looks pretty big and maybe move it a little bit away, you already know what we want to do. We're going to go over here, set the size of the box to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And I'm going to also make it away a little bit to minus 0 0.3 so that the box is a little bit away from me and not close to me. So let's go ahead and run the application and see that if it actually is a little bit away from us. Okay, there we go. So now definitely it's away from us and we can see the box a little bit more clearly. You can adjust the Z position to send the box even more away or more further away from you where you are. Okay, so other thing that we can do when we're starting out is applying some sort of a material to our box. Currently, our box simply appears as default color or default material, which is all white, which is fine, but maybe we can actually do some material. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a material and inside the material, and inside the material, we can actually pass in, well, nothing, all right? Now we can actually go ahead and set the material. So material dot uh, diffuse, let's see, diff, oops. So material, dot diffuse dot contents equals to UI color and any color that you actually want. So UI color dot uh, red is perfectly fine. Diffuse basically means that the material, how is it is going to reflect the light. So that's why we're putting diffuse dot contents to a color. Now you can also set this up to an image that will work fine also. We have created the material, but we have never really assigned the material to the geometry. So box dot materials equals to, uh, and we can set this particular material, all right? So a material array or an array of materials. Why an array of materials? Well, because box has six sides. So all the sides, we are applying the same exact material. When, after applying the material, let's go ahead and run this, and hopefully we'll be able to see a, a different color, maybe a red color, a node or a red color cube being added to our screen. And here we go. So you can see that now the color of this is a bit of a red, right? And you can obviously also apply images if you want to. All the sides are red because we have applied the material array, the same material on all the sides. So there you have it. This is the basic introduction to ARKit. Always remember that when you have to add some items, to, uh, to the augmented reality world. And the, if you're using scene kit, you have to add it using nodes. So you have to create a SCN node and then op add those items. Each of these nodes will contain some sort of a geometry. Sometime you will create those geometries yourself. Sometime those geometries will be part of the model that you're trying to add. So you don't really have to provide any geometry. It just will be part of the model, all right? I hope that you have enjoyed the basic introduction to the ARKit framework. And if you want to learn more about the ARKit framework, then you may be interested in my amazing course, which is Mastering ARKit for iOS. It is available on Udemy. And this is the, the, the best course on ARKit. It is more than 15 hours with 75 downloadable resources. Yep, 15 plus hours. And as you can see, it just goes on and on with so many different things. Persistence, ARKit 2.0, image detection and tracking, reflections, even integrating with the map box. So this means that you can actually display different kind of sceneries like Rocky Mountains coming to life in a 3D environment. That's just amazing. It also covers scanning and detecting 3D objects, building a complete AR watch. That is pretty cool. So if you want to learn more about 
how to develop amazing AR kit applications, check out my course. There is a link in the description, even it, it will give you a much better price. So click on the link in the description, that's a coupon code link. And uh, thank you so much for supporting my channel and thank you so much for supporting my Udemy courses also. Thank you.